All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike. As we say here in the land of fire and ice, Shanga Lao Ban. Right, so let us jump into climbing anchors. We're going to talk about one main type of anchor. There are two. The one we're not talking about is going to be an anchor for top down, meaning munter hitching or lowering someone into a hole and bringing them back up. That anchor is the same as a crevasse rescue anchor. No difference, so you know it because you've seen the videos. The anchor we are going to talk about is going to be a top roping anchor. So that is bottom up, meaning you are down with the client. Basically, you have a rope from your ATC redirecting through a triple action steel carabiner or two carabiners opposite and opposed. We'll talk about that. Going back down to the client. Right, so that is the anchor we're going to talk about because what's different with this is the focal point has to be over the edge. It gives you two benefits. Number one, you could see it. Number two, it gives a point where the client can stop climbing. You don't want them to go over the edge, potentially causing your carabiners to cross load, which you know what that is as well. So let us talk about these, these basically three types of how to set up these anchor in three different ways. I have this little handy dandy five meter prusik here. This is a seven millimeter cordlet. Um, Sterling, Beal, they're, they're both okay, but this is a Sterling cordlet here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to join this rope. Now I'm going to join it with a single fisherman's because single fisherman's can be used for ropes of the same diameter, meaning I'm joining a seven and a seven. I'm going to jump back down here to this view. So let's look down here. I'm going to take both ropes down. Notice the exit strands are on opposing sides. One exit strands here, one exit strands here. I'm going to take this exit strand, go over my thumb. It comes through here. It comes through as you see, goes back. I remove my thumb and then I pull it through just like so. What we need for slack is a fist and a bit, a fist and a bit of slack. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now all I do is flip it over. That's all I do, simply flip it over. And now the strand I tied is here and the strand that moves is in front of me. So I'm going to take this strand now that's in front of me, put my thumb over the, over the strand here, go through, as we can see here, going through, removing my thumb, putting it back through. Okay, again, making sure it's nice and tight. And that is a single fisherman's knot. Now what that means is basically this allows us to have a much longer sling because before we have a 120 centimeter sling, now we have a much longer sling. So I'm just going to put this into the, um, the screws here, like so. We have a locker, non-locker, which is acceptable here. Make sure that locker is locked. And um, what I'm going to do is make sure before I do anything, I want to equalize. So I'm going to know where the direction of pull is and I'm going to make the direction of pull facing that way. So I'm going to take a carabiner. Now what I recommend for the focal point anchors is you have a triple action steel because a steel carabiner, you're only going to buy one of these. Whereas if you have aluminum at your focal point, you will, will go through carabiners guaranteed in the summer, especially with ash. So we're going to have a triple action steel here. I'm going to just put that in the direction of pull. I'm going to put the knot, as you notice up here, the knot is up by the, um, the screw up here. The direction of pulls this direction here. I'm going to take it and just tie, tie it overhand here for the focal point. I'm just going to pull it, pull it to the direction of pull, right? This is where the client would be. And now this gives me an anchor that is a little longer. And also what's ideal is ideally it would be over the edge like so. I will be able to see the focal point over the edge. That's why we can use the five meter press. It gives us some extra length. Now let's say we have, we need a longer option, right? It's not long enough. We need a longer option. So what's our second option? So basically I'm going to take this off undo this, take this off the wall like so. And now what I can do, the second option is I could join two five meter prussics together. Now I have a super long, basically cordlet, right? That I can use, of course, with two single fishermen knots. So what I'm going to do is just clip it in here. I'm going to take it now. And now my focal point, can be really far, really, really, really far away. So far, not even sure. There we go. So my focal point now can be very far over the edge. Okay. Which is ideal in case you have to set far away back from the edge, you know, maybe the ice is rotten or whatever the case is. Now you have a very, very long focal point. Now let me show you how to make a focal point knot here with two carabiners opposite and opposed. So I'm going to take one carabiner on my left side. I'm going to take one carabiner. This is just a pear shaped screw gate carabiner. I'm going to take this carabiner. Of course, the direction of pull will be that way. I'm just going to make, make this overhand here. I'm going to make this overhand. Okay. Now this is in. Now for using a 
at screw gay carabiner, you need two carabiners opposite and opposed. What does this mean? I'm going to take the second carabiner, and that carabiner needs to be like this. As you can see, the gates open opposite to each other. The carabiners are opposed to each other. So I have to put it through like so. And now, as you can see, this is opposite and opposed. The gates are opposite. The carabiners and gates are opposite and opposed. And I'm putting the rope in, and the rope would be sitting right in the center there, right? Making sure, of course, both of these carabiners would be locked. Now, that would be gates opposite and opposed um, for two locking carabiners, or you can have that steel triple action carabiner, and this allows you to have your focal point definitely, definitely over the edge, right? This is a fact, okay? Now, the next option, let's say you only have one five meter prusik. This is the option I like to use if you only have one five meter prusik. We're just gonna use one five. I'm gonna take this off like so. Take this one off as well. I'm going to undo all this, this magic here. Now, if we just have one five meter prusik, the benefit of the next system I'm going to show you is it's easy to equalize after you've tied the focal point knot. Meaning I tied that focal point um, overhand and now it's not equalized. If I, if I do it this way, then what I have to do, I have to adjust the knot at the focal point, right? As I showed you, or if we need to adjust it using the method we just did now. However, there's another way to do it, which is a little easier. You have an eight on one side and then a clove hitch on the other. And remember the clove hitch, as you know, is adjustable. So let's do that. I'm just gonna tie, it's gonna tie an eight on this end here. You know what they say, clean out every time, baby, right? So I have a fist and a bit of slack, a fist and a bit of slack for this eight. This eight is going here on the carabiner. I'm gonna take now this part, I'm gonna tie a clove hitch here. I'm gonna put a clove, and I'm gonna put this clove on here, on the locking, and I'm gonna put just a stopper knot behind the clove, right? Let's put a stopper knot behind the clove, okay? There we go, nice stopper knot. Now. If I tie the, the focal point like normal, if I tie it like normal, let's say I just wanted to make an overhand like this or something. Now notice there's only one strand here, right? But we have two legs, so we want redundancy at the focal point. How do we make redundancy at the focal point? So we're gonna do what's called a bunny ears eight, which is basically an eight that has two uh, focal point loops, okay? Now how's this done? So we're gonna do it slowly here. I have this knot rope. I'm gonna do it like I would normally do an eight. Now, I have almost a done eight here. If I put it through here, this is an eight, as we see. This is an eight. However, what I'm gonna do is put my fingers through, and now I'm holding part of the eight. I'm holding this part of the eight here, as you can see. Remember, this is an eight, and all I'm doing is holding part of the eight, right? Now, I'm gonna take the loop, and I'm gonna pull the loop over everything while still holding those two strands. Now, those two strands come through, like so, the two strands come through and give me my bunny ears eight. I have two focal point strands here now. I have redundancy at the focal point, okay? So that is the bunny ears eight. You can watch the video again, check it out. Very important thing to get once you get it, very simple. You can also look at it on Google. Um, now, let's say for example, if we can see here, this is not equalized because this is loose, okay? Now what do I do? I simply take some slack out of the clove. I'm going to take some slack out of the clove. Now let's see if it's equalized now. Right. Um, basically, actually I'm going to, I took a little bit too much slack. Let's see. Yep, so now it's equalized, okay? So that, all I did is simply adjust it from the clove hitch here, making sure you have this carabiner is locked, you have a stopper knot here, we have an eight, and this allows us to have a focal point that's pretty long, right? All I would do is, Put my triple action steel, of course, on the end of this. Put my triple action steel on the end of this. And now I have a nice long focal point that I can adjust after the fact, after I tie this focal point bunny ears eight, I can adjust it here at the clove. And that's a really simple thing to do. Highly recommend, I like this one. This is my favorite if, uh, if I need to extend the focal point for that top roping anchor. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, as you know what we say here, shangalow ban. <laughs>